Instagram.com. Welcome to our molecular biology primer for those not initiated in molecular biology. This is not meant to be a comprehensive review of every aspect of molecular biology. So every cell has a nucleus and it is in the nucleus that you have DNA. DNA codes for the different types of proteins that are used in the nucleus. And DNA is a string basically, two strings in fact, interwoven called a double helix and they are made up of a string of nucleotides. And those nucleotides are arranged in certain codes. Those codes are the code that tells you exactly what your protein is gonna be when you are done. A, T, G, and C are the letters that the nucleus will use as a code that will be translated into proteins and protein synthesis. So in the DNA, because it is double-stranded, if on one side there is an A, then the other side must be binding to a T. And that's how they keep it straight. On one side there is a G, on the other side there is a C. And so if you know what one strand's code is, you will be able to figure out what the other code is. So there's also something about these DNA molecules that are important as well, and that is on every single one of these nucleotides, there is one less oxygen than would normally be. That's why it's known as deoxyribonucleic acid. And that's important to understand because when we get out into the cytoplasm, that is the rest of the cell inside the cell, but not in the nucleus, instead of using DNA, we're gonna be using RNA. So RNA is exactly the same as DNA except for two major areas. RNA will use exactly the same letters except it will not use a T it will use a U, so it's A-U-G-C. U stands for uracil. The other thing about it is that in that area where there is no oxygen, there actually is an oxygen, and that's why it's known as ribonucleic acid, and this is known as deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA is completely different than RNA in that sense, but in another sense, it's using pretty much the same language. So it's using the language of nucleotides. So the language here, is nucleotides in the nucleus, and the language here is in the script, if you will, of nucleotides. It is the nucleotides that create the code. RNA, generally speaking, is not double-stranded, it is only single-stranded. And so what happens here is that this is the master blueprint. That is the DNA. And what happens is that this DNA opens up, and I'll show you here what it looks like. So imagine this is a strand here of DNA. It opens up and there's a direction to these ends. Just go with me on this one. One is known as the five prime end, and one is known as the three prime end, and then it flips around. The other one has it arranged so that this side is the five prime end, and this side is the three prime end. And so what happens is there's an enzyme that's called RNA polymerase. Anytime I say ACE at the end of anything, it's an enzyme. It's a protein enzyme, generally speaking. So RNA polymerase, is the enzyme that polymerizes RNA together. So here we have this RNA polymerase that's on the DNA, and it's traveling in this direction. And as it goes over the different nucleotides, boom, 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 the different nucleotides, and this is all happening in the nucleus, it starts to pull in different nucleotides that are available to make a long string of RNA. Because we're going from the language of nucleotides, nucleotides being the language here, because we're going from nucleotides again back to nucleotides, that is not a change in the language of the code. That is simply a transcription of the code. It's like we're photocopying almost, so that word transcription is the term that is used when you go from nucleotides to nucleotides. So when you're going from the nucleus, information is coming out into the cytoplasm, you must transfer it from DNA into RNA. And generally speaking, in human cells, there's no way to really go from RNA back to DNA. This is a unidirectional thing. So in other words, the code is always kept the same, generally speaking. It is copied in the process of transcription. And you go from a copy of the DNA making a copy of the RNA. Here we have the RNA. There's something that happens to the RNA. There's a five prime end, and there's also a three prime end. And what happens is they put a cap on the beginning of the five prime end to protect it so it doesn't start to dissolve. And then there's also what we know as a poly A tail at the three prime end. This RNA 
with a five prime cap and a three prime poly A tail is known as a special type of RNA known as messenger RNA. Why is it called messenger? Because it's sending out a message from the nucleus into the cytoplasm about what needs to happen next. In other words, it has the grand blueprint for the entire cell and it's saying here are the plans for this portion of the cell that I want to build and here is the message that's coming from the central portion of the nucleus. That's known as messenger RNA. So this messenger RNA now has a bunch of nucleotides. Of course, now it's using slightly different letters. It's using the A, it's using the C, it's using the G, but instead of a T, it's using a U, and it's single-stranded. And when I say it's single-stranded, it's single-stranded because it is ready to be translated. In other words, we're now going to switch into a different language instead of nucleotide base pairs. We're going to be switching into the language of proteins. And proteins, if you don't know, are made up of amino acids. And so we're going to be going from the language of nucleotides to the language of polypeptides or proteins or amino acids. And that's known as not transcription, but rather translation because it's a different language. And so what happens here is that you get a ribosome. A ribosome sits back on here and there's a small and a large ribosome, and there's some spaces here for another kind of RNA to come along that's been made before, and that is a tRNA. What's the purpose of a tRNA? There are many, many, many different types of tRNAs, all of which are bound to it to have an amino acid, a different amino acid. There's 20 different amino acids. And so tRNA, with its amino acid, has three codons, or anticodons as we'll call them, base pairs that fit perfectly into that code. And it would fit perfectly in there, bring its amino acid in, and then this whole structure would then move down three nucleotides to fit perfectly in there. And now this amino acid would be attached to this. And so as it goes down this messenger RNA through the process of translation, we are converting the language of nucleotides into the language of polypeptides. And so now the end process of that is a long polypeptide with a bunch of amino acids. And if you aren't aware, amino acids have the chemical composition of NCC, that's one. Another one would be NCC, that's a nitrogen carbon carbon, NCC. These polypeptides, these proteins, do everything in the cell. These are the proteins that can, for instance, make hemoglobin, that binds oxygen. These are the proteins that are going to be involved in cellular respiration, like glycolysis. So you have a whole bunch of these enzymes and proteins, and there's hundreds of thousands of different proteins. If you want to move your muscle, guess what? That's an interaction with actin and myosin. Those are all proteins that are made, and they all have a specific shape and size. And it's very important that those proteins look exactly the same. If that one amino acid changes, then the whole protein may not work. So this is what happens in sickle cell anemia is when you have a glutamic amino acid getting substituted and changed to a valine amino acid, and that causes sickle cell anemia. It is important that these amino acids be coded for correctly, and that is what happens with transcription and translation. These proteins can be made in different ways. You can have a ribosome making on a messenger RNA a protein which just goes into the cytoplasm, or you can have these proteins arrange themselves on cellular structures like the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, in which case these proteins will be embedded in these organelles, and when they go and fuse with the cell surface, they will actually put the protein in the cell surface so that if it were to bud off, you would have these proteins embedded in the cell surface. And this is important because viruses will use all of this to make more viruses because viruses have proteins inside of them that have to be made again, and viruses have proteins on their cell surface that have to be made again. And so depending on where the virus wants those proteins to be made, then it's going to basically direct those proteins and ribosomes to either the Golgi apparatus or the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or just to be made in the cytoplasm itself. The reason why I bring all of this up is because what a virus is going to do when it infects a cell is it is actually going to take over the machinery of this cell. 
So it's going to take over transcription, potentially. It's going to be taking over translation. It's going to be taking over the use of the Golgi apparatus and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And its purpose is it's going to take all of these things in your cell, which is to make you have a fuller life. And it's going to do one thing, and that is to make more viruses. And different viruses do it in different ways. So we're going to talk about that. Now that you understand a little bit about molecular biology, it's going to make sense. So please join us for our update where we talk about the coronavirus and how it invades the cell and does what it does. And we'll talk about other viruses and we can compare and contrast. Thanks for joining us.